Good day everyone, hope you're having a blessed day. It's just a wee portion of scripture I want to look at. Uh, it's in Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. And it's three words that really stuck out when I was reading this passage. The three words are dens, caves and strongholds. But so let's look at these verses and then we'll look at a few other verses linked to these. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian seven years. And the hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains, and the caves and strongholds. The Israelites for their sin are oppressed by the Midians because of their sin that God uh, de delivered them into the hands of the Midians. Seven years. So let's look at this word, dens. But first of all, I want to say this from Hebrews 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. God loved his people here, and that's why he gave them over to the hands of the Midians, because he wanted them to come out of their sin and idolatry, and he wanted them to fully trust in him, to come back to the, the one and only true God, the God of the Bible. So let's look at this word, dens. Minhara, it means a channel, a cavern, a dugout, a hole. It, mean, it can mean a deep valley which water flows. This cave, this cave has some light coming into it. This den has some light coming into it. It's not like a, a cave, which we'll look at next. There's a den, there's some light that can get in. We know that Jesus is the light of the world. And maybe he's trying to come back into your life. Maybe you've walked away from him. I'd urge you to come back into the light. Come closer to Christ. Come back to him. Let's look at this word, the second word, caves. It, in the, the Hebrew, it's a similar meaning. It's a similar sound word. It's me'era. Me'era is cavern, dark hole, or a dark hole. We see here, let's look at 1 Samuel 22, 1 to 2. David, we're looking at David here, 1 Samuel 22, 1 to 2. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dullam. When his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and there, there were with him about 400, 400 men. We, look, we see here, there's three types of men, 400 men. I'm sure there was women as well, but the Bible speaks of men here. It can sometimes mean men and women. It says here, the first group we have are them that are in distress. Distress can mean anguish in confinement or have a disability. Christ will take anyone who comes to him. He is, he is that kind of God that we serve. He wants you to come to him. Uh, we see here debt, all them that are in debt, them that have, are bankrupt, maybe, have given their money, have lended their money out on, uh, or in debt. Maybe you're in debt. You're in debt to this world. You're in debt to God because of your sin. You have a sin debt. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We see the third people here, they're discontented, which in the Hebrew means mara, which means bitter, angry, or heavy. Paul the Apostle speaks of this word in Ephesians 4, 31. He says this, Let all bitterness 
and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Maybe you're discontented. Maybe you're discontented with the church that you're in at the minute. There's many people that get discontented with people. They go to church for the wrong reasons. They go to church to get their ears tickled, to hear what they want to hear. But I read this book recently, just this last few days, and it's uh, by James McConnell, The Good, The Bad, and Jesus Christ. I don't know if you can see that. A, a wonderful book. I read it a couple of nights. But he says this on page 174. He speaks, he quotes the scripture first, Paul the Apostle speaking. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Maybe you need to just put away childish things. Maybe there's nothing wrong with the church. Maybe you just need to look at yourself. This is what James McCann says. Something I detest is a spoiled brat. If you do not know what a spoiled brat is, basically I am referring to a child that has their parents wrapped around their little finger. The child squeals, roars, cries, jumps up and down, throws things, smashes things, lies on the floor, all for one reason, to get what they want, not thinking about their parent. Maybe you go to church to get what you want. That's not the purpose of church. The church, you go there to serve, you go there to be a part of the body, you go there to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes, we won't get on with everybody. That's life. No matter what sphere of life you're in, you can't get on with everybody because everybody is different. He goes on to say, this may waken you up as a Christian, but we have spoiled Christian brats. Their prayer is, give me, give me, give me. Church leaders have raised a generation of spoiled brats with self being their altar of worship, and we wonder why we do not have a move of God. This was James M M McConnell. The late James McConnell says this, that we have, you know, some churches, not all churches, some churches, have created a generation of spoiled brats with self being their altar of worship. And we wonder why we do not have more a move of God. We need to realise it's a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, men will fail you, pastors will fail you, ministers will fail you. You need to know who Christ is, the Christ of the Bible. You need to know who he is. Maybe it's not the church, maybe it's you. We'll look at this last word, strongholds, which means metzad, munitions, mountain, a fastness, a castle. It, the Hebrew Chaldean lexicon says this, to lay in wait a place where hunters would seek their prey. You know, the devil comes like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we need to be careful. We need to be in God's word. We look at 1 Samuel 23, 14. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds, that's his word, Metzad, and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph, and Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. His hand. God was on his side. There's times that we need to take a step back. There is times we need to take a step back, but See, David abode in the wilderness in the stronghold. He abode in the mountain. That word abode means uh, dwell. He dwell. He dwelt in the mountain. John 15 says this. And this is where we need to dwell. We need to dwell in Christ. Just going to read a few verses just to finish off. John 15 says this. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man, which means farmer. Every branch in me that birth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that heareth fruit, or birth fruit, sorry, he purges it, 
that it may bring forth more fruit. See, we're going back to Hebrews 12, 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. Sometimes he needs to prune the branches away. Sometimes he needs to prune you that you may bear much fruit. Verse 3 of John 15 says this. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. If you're going to take a step back from church, don't take a step back from reading God's word. Abide in Christ. He is a true vine. He is a husband man. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. We need to abide in Christ. We need to abide in his word. I want to read the last John 15 verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. We can do nothing without Christ. We need to be in the vine. We need to be in a place that, that Christ wants us to be. We need to be in him, most of all. I want to read this Again, Judges 6, verse 2. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the Danes, which are in mountains and caves and strongholds. We need to be in Christ. We need to be abiding in the vine. We need to get back to our first love, which is Jesus. Thank you for listening. And may you have a blessed day. God bless.